what, what would be your top priority? My top priority as mayor will be to stand up for all of the diligent workforce people that make up this community and to put an end to abortion with grace, mercy, and love. So what are, what are some specific examples? Like how, how can you stand up for working people through the office of uh, mayor? Excuse me? Just, just what, are, what are some specific examples of ways that you could stand up for working people through, through the office of the mayor? Well, for one, I am a working person. I know what it's like to have representation. So I firmly believe that working people need to have someone representing them in their corner but that working person doesn't have a shot if they don't have the right to live. So that's why I'm firmly opposed to abortion and I'm praying that it's eradicated from this city. And could, could you talk about just uh, like, what, what are some things you could do as, as mayor to, to stop abortion? Like what, what, are, what are some ways to, 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 enact, to enact that? Well, the number one thing that we can do as a city is to band together and pray that all these facilities get shut down and that we educate our daughters and our young men on what a true marriage is and what purity is and to be a city on a hill that'll attract people in, boost our economy and do something new like never before. It's time for a change. Yeah, so, so one, one of the big things that uh, the, next, the next mayor will face, of course, is the budget situation and uh, a part of that is uh, revenue sharing from the state. Uh, and I just wonder uh, if the state does move forward with a plan to uh, drastically reduce or to eliminate revenue sharing with uh, municipalities, what's, what's a way to make up for the multi-million dollar deficit that, that would result? Like how, how would you approach that? Well, you look at a working guy standpoint. If you take a pay cut and your budget's not as much, what are you gonna do? You're not going to build that extra room on your house that you planned. You're going to you're going to cut things that you had intended to do to keep your family operating in a successful environment. Now, another thing we can do, like I said earlier, is just band together, is to put aside our differences and see where we come together and make this city something new, like just brand new. Yeah. And one, one thing that, uh, that's been talked about a pretty good amount is the possibility of having a sales tax uh, as a way of getting an additional stream of revenue for the city and possibly to lower the burden on property tax owners um, or pro uh, property owners, I should say. Um, so what would you consider a sales tax as, as an additional stream of revenue? Well, I need to make one thing real clear about this, that I don't want to have both of them at any time. If we have a sales tax, we should not have a property tax. We don't need to start stacking taxes. But I believe that if we cut property taxes entirely, that the people who live here and own homes are going to take more pride in their home saying, this is my home, this is where I live, this is my city, and I'm proud of my city. And I believe that will generate revenue through tourism when people come to this city right now they don't pay property taxes, they have a hotel tax, but when they buy all these items, they're not being taxed on it. Now, if they came in and were taxed, we could generate tremendous revenue, but that's up to the voting people. But once again, at no time should we have both of them. Yeah, so another, another big issue that the next mayor will face uh, along with the assembly and the legislature is uh, how to regulate marijuana and cities kind of watching to see what the state does. but. Uh, are, are there any specific uh, areas that you would like to see regulated or areas that you would like to see deregulated? When I walk into a building and I smell someone smoking a cigarette, I hate that smell. And I feel bad for that person that's hooked on any kind of smoking, whether it be marijuana or whether it be smoking, anything. But as far as hemp, you can't have the seed without the plant. Now. Our constitution was written on hemp paper. The fibers were used to sail to this free land that we live in now. So we can't just disregard this plant. Now, education is key, and people need to understand that when they're getting high and getting drunk, they're missing something.
that only God can satisfy. And I firmly believe that, and that's the foundation of everything that I stand on, is Jesus Christ. So, so looking, looking at this, uh, I mean, some of the questions that are thrown around are just like, what, how, how businesses should be allowed to operate in the city, or if the city should opt out. Uh, could, could you maybe talk a little bit to, uh, to that and what your plan would be uh, as far as just in, enacting what the, the voters passed in, uh, in November, the November election? We ought to lead by example. We're the largest city, most northern region, in the greatest land in all the earth. We ought to shine, and this is our time. This is our time to stand up. All the young people and old people, I'm just saying, stand up for what we were founded on. Stand up for truth. Stand up for liberty. And stand up for your right to freedom of speech. And, and so uh, outside of uh, policy questions, uh, what, what's your favorite way to spend, spend your time in Anchorage? What's your favorite, some of your favorite activities? One of my favorite things to do is honestly getting in the Holy Ghost present, praying in other tongues, getting in prayer groups. But I've met so many great people on job sites. When I was working on the Center Point West job with the Carpenters Local 1281, I met this guy that I didn't know who he was, but we wound up becoming very good friends, and now we go fishing all the time. I actually got my king stamp this year, and I nailed a huge king. I got that sucker 10 feet from shore, and then it went upstream when I was in a ravine. I'm never going to forget that. But I was hesitant on getting that king stamp, but I got it, and I wound up getting a whole bunch out of Seward, a whole bunch out of Ship Creek. I think Anchorage is an awesome place. I'm really excited what God's doing in this land. Yeah. So I guess maybe, maybe uh, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, who, who you are, what, what you do, uh, how long in Anchorage, stuff like that? Well, I like to hike around in the mountains. Hmm. I like to exercise. I like to go to this new church heart of the city. They've got a vision for a revolution revival where people are turning their hearts to the one thing that's missing. It's Jesus Christ. And I stand so firm in that, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I hear the message coming from a man, Chris Carmody, who I highly respect. And it's just, it's impacted me. It's verified my position. And even everything we do, whether we run in an election or we have a job, if we do everything in love, it'll change everything. I'm so grateful to be here. So grateful to be in this election.